The second main division of the Bible is more familiar to folks, but the relationship between it and the Old Testament is often misunderstood. In this video, we'll begin to identify and clarify these points as we examine an overview of the New Testament. As with the Old Testament, we need to understand and create a distinction in terms used to describe this collection of books. The term New Testament can be used in two ways. The first of these is as a description of its 27 books written during the first century. The second way in which we can use this term is to refer to the doctrine of the New Testament. As we continue these studies, we'll see that the New Testament is a law. We'll clarify this point as we continue our basic lessons, and we'll discuss it in more depth in later videos dealing with doctrine. Let's talk about the uses of these to understand this point better. In a later video, I'll construct a timeline of God's spiritual laws, but we do need to discuss some of this now in order to understand the relationship of the Old and New Testaments, as well as the doctrinal differences. In a previous video, it was noted that the period governed by the Law of Moses didn't end with the events or time period covered by the last prophet, Malachi. Christ lived and died under the period governed by the Law, which causes confusion for some. The New Testament books begin with the life of Christ, but don't mark an immediate transition of the Law to the era of the New Testament. The New Testament, speaking of the doctrinal period, officially begins in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost with the establishment of the church. We'll cover these events later in more detail as we build the study. For now, we'll concentrate on the content of the New Testament. The 27 books of the New Testament were written during the first century in Koine Greek, which was commonly used throughout the Roman Empire. There are eight writers identified, including Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Peter, Paul, James, and Jude. Most of the writers are of Jewish descent, with the exception of Luke, a Greek physician who became a companion of the Apostle Paul during his preaching trips. We can arrange the 27 books of the New Testament into groups, as we did with the Old Testament, and this will assist us later in understanding, establishing context, and the relevant history. There are four groups, which are the Gospels, History, Epistles, and Prophecy. Let's examine these groups more closely. The Gospels. The Gospels are made up of four books that detail the birth, life, ministry, and death of Christ. These books are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. History. There's one book of history in the New Testament that summarizes the establishment and early work of the church. This book is Acts, or the Acts of the Apostles. Epistles. There are 21 books identified as the epistles in the New Testament. The word epistle means a formal letter that was sent with a specific purpose, such as instruction, answering questions, or revealing things as needed. These letters are addressed to individuals, congregations in specific locations, congregations in geographic regions, or to Christians in general. Let's list these, and then we'll identify their audience to which they're addressed. These books are Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and Jude. Now let's identify the principal address of the epistles. They're addressed to individuals, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, and Philemon, congregations in specific locations, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, and 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, although this address has to be determined more indirectly in these books congregations in geographic regions, Galatians and 1 Peter, and to Christians in general, which we'll clarify in more detail later. These are Hebrews, James, 2 Peter, and Jude. We need to keep in mind that although these books may be addressed to specific recipients, as has been noted, 
they collectively reveal the singular doctrine of the New Testament that applies to all Christians. The address is relevant in establishing the overall context and thereby the appropriate application of what the book contains. The final category in the New Testament is that of prophecy. There's one book in this group containing highly figurative language, which is frequently misinterpreted. This book is Revelation. In the next video, we'll look at the Gospels.